Use that last Polori mate on loot, drop to save, and I'm hoping that we're ready to head forward here. Let's make a left and go through the scary door. This is indeed the scary door. Use the miracle key and head through. For boss time, we are up against Dark Force. Notice how we don't have an HP bar on him. We don't know how much HP he has, and therefore we don't know how much damage we're doing. He does have a set amount of HP, but the game doesn't want you to know it, so I'll let you know at the end. Hopefully at the end when I beat him. So we're pretty much going to start with the same strategy that I did with Le Chic. Uh, let's go with a fire. Let's go with an attack from Meow. Dark Force has a high evasion rate, though, so... Don't rely on physical attacks here too much. Tylon, of course, hits all the time, so you don't have to worry about Tylon. Loot, though, wind. And Loot will probably be doing the most damage here. And Dark Force does a ton of damage. Don't focus on Loot like that. Yeah, Dark Force dodged the only physical attack there. Oh, uh, we're gonna have to do as much damage as we can. Let's go for fire. Let's go for a super heal on Loot. Let's go for an attack, and let's go for wind. Come on, wind. If my entire party is able to make it somehow, I believe I will win right around when loot runs out of HP or MP. Meow, you got focused on. Why is he focusing today? Why is there a focus? He normally spreads it out. But that's pretty much the strategy. Fire, heal, attack, wind. And yes, the gun is more important here. That was a ton of damage. That was a ton of damage. So fire, heal, loot, attack, wind. Now as long as I can keep loot alive for at least a, a while here. Okay, good. No, wait, that was... No, 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 shit. Down goes Tylon. That's our first death of the game, and it could not have come at a worse time. Um... Yeah, just attack right now, meow. Do what you can! Yeah, the Magic Waller's not gonna help you here. He does more damage than the Magic Waller can... can hold, so... It's pretty much useless. Yeah, keep on attacking Elisa. That only did like 10 damage that first time. All right, more fire, attack, and wind. I was really hoping to have everybody live through this, but I'm not surprised that it didn't happen. Not surprised at all by that. Uh, let's go for a fire here. Uh, while we have the opportunity, let's go for a power boost on Elisa. And loot... I don't believe you have enough for wind anymore, so you're going to have to go for a fire here. Okay, that is a significant amount of damage. That is significant. Attack, super heal on yourself, meow, and, and Luz can just attack. It's just a battle of attrition here. Who can last it out? And I'm counting on me, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And suddenly he only wants to attack once now. How lucky for me. All right, attack, attack, attack. Dodged. Loot didn't, didn't miss. What the hell's your problem now? Attack, attack, attack. If we had Tylon, we might already be done here. But he focused on him. And down goes Dark Force. You've beaten Dark Force, it said very quickly there. Oh, goodness. My mind and body were taken over by an evil force. It's a wonder I'm still alive. Thank you. You've done it. You've saved Algol. History shall repeat your names, always. Elisa, there's something I must tell you. It's a secret I've kept from you to spare your life. Now that Lashik is gone, it's safe to come out with it. Elisa... Your father was the king of Algol. His royal blood is inside you. It has given you strength. You are without a leader, Elisa. 
Will you succeed your father and become Algol's queen? You can actually say no to this. And he's like, oh, that's disappointing. But you're always welcome back. But no, of course, we're going to say yes. We're going to say yes, we will become Algol's queen. Your father was the best king Algol has ever known. And more than that, he was a good man. He would be proud of you today. And we have won. We have beaten Fantasy Star. And the world is bright once more. In time, the sky grew brighter. The creatures subsided. The only thing above Baya Marley now is a cool, gentle breeze. Apparently, we destroyed everything else. Algol's thankful people picked up the pieces and started anew. Elisa. Tylon. Lutes. And Meow. Back in cat form. Though memories of this dark time will fade, these four names will remain in the hearts of Algol's people forever. We have done it. And the credits are done in a, what I'm going to say is a very innovative way for the time. Remember, this came out the same year, right around the same time as Final Fantasy 1. So to have this first person style, the first person dungeon style gamer Mickey. Hey, she was an assistant coordinator. Uh, this style of credits, I think, is very innovative. And I think there are a lot of things in this game that are rather innovative. Uh, ultimately, though, I think that it is flawed, uh, and it didn't necessarily age as well as, let's say, Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy did, but ultimately, I would put it between the two. I think that the game overall is better than Dragon Quest 1, but probably not as good as Final Fantasy 1, which makes sense because it was released between the two, although I think Final Fantasy was released, like, the next week or something like that. And of course it was released on a more popular console, so it's always remembered better. But I feel that Fantasy Star is often forgotten in uh, the Japanese RPG uh, pantheon of older games, the things that, you know, redid everything. Oh, I believe uh, the retranslation is um, the guys that helped us out for this, uh, version of it so yeah, once again thank you for this uh the music uh, i felt was very good in this version and the sound overall was better than what i remembered in the master system version so uh thank you for uh translating it and that's gonna be the game i like i said uh i it doesn't necessarily age well but I think there were a lot of innovations here, especially when it comes to the cutscenes. There weren't many, right? There weren't many, but there were some. And in 1987, that's saying something. There were cutscenes in this. Uh, I didn't necessarily like uh, the menu system. Uh, there were a lot of things that only came up a couple times, like the hidden walls or the search mechanic, but they were in the menu for the whole game. Uh, but overall, I think that this game would be much better received with altered numbers. That's probably the best way for me to put it. Uh, it felt a little too reliant on randomness. That the monster flies did more damage to me in a, an attack that did a lot of damage to Tylon uh, than some of the monsters at the end of the game did to Tylon. Like, I think one of them hit Tylon for three damage, but the monster flies have hit me for seven on the same level right? And those are the weakest enemies in the game. Uh, the chests, I do not like the fact that every, um, that every battle spawned a chest that could be trapped. It changed depending on what enemy you were fighting, so of course the monster flies and the devil bats weren't gonna drop a treasure chest that exploded on you, uh, but as you went through the game, every treasure chest had a chance to do damage to you, so you pretty much got punished for wanting money. 
and this game required that you get a lot of money. So it felt like a punishment for doing something that you needed to do. If they took out that mechanic altogether, the treasure chest exploding on you, or even the treasure chests at all, you just gave me the money, right, at the end of the fight, uh, that I think this game would be a lot better served and a lot better remembered. Uh, but as it stands, it's like the, the toughest enemy in the game was the treasure chest because those treasure chests always did a lot of damage to me. It was something like 30 across the board. I think I saw as high as 50 one time uh, on a character. I think that was Meow. But uh, either way, it just... It just felt like there was too much randomness with the number generation. So if that had been changed, I think it would be a lot better remembered. And I think it does deserve to be remembered because I think that a lot of things that happened in this game influenced Final Fantasy. I mean, even though Final Fantasy 1 sold better than Fantasy Star, at least in America by a lot, because I really don't know anybody that played Fantasy Star personally. Uh, in real life, I should say, but I know a lot of people that have played Final Fantasy 1. So even though this didn't sell as well as Final Fantasy 1, I think that Final Fantasy looked at things that happened in this game and said, okay, that's something that we want to do. Uh, we want to have the char we have we want to have multiple characters. Uh, we want to have each one of them have a different little storyline. We want you to uh, recruit characters as you go forward. We want uh, twists and turns, even though this game put them at the end. Uh, but you know, th they those are things that happened in this game that didn't happen in Dragon Quest or in Fan Final Fantasy One. Maybe I'm overstating it a bit, but, uh, you know, a few things changed, and I think this would be a lot better served. Of course, it's dated, uh, so you don't know where to go at times and all that kind of stuff, but uh, it, I think that it, it's a little bit of an underrated gem for the time. So I think those are my opinions on Fantasy Star. I rambled quite a bit at the end here, but I did enjoy this game. I hope you guys have enjoyed this entire Let's Play. I've been Baller Scoop. I've been joined, as always, by our champions, Elisa, Meow, Tylon, and Loot, whose names shall echo through eternity. Hope you guys have enjoyed these parts. Hope you laughed. Hope you learned. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.